What is up, everybody? It is dark. We're barking. It's bark after dark. We're back. We took a hiatus last Monday because Roos and I uh, ventured our way into the radio world. We found out the fast-paced lifestyle Stum of live stumbled, radio. Stumbled our way through the Bill Shank show uh, in the least graceful way possible. But uh, it was I, – I, I had a lot of fun. We, we, we should talk about that later on for sure. We, de we definitely will. We've got a guest, a special guest tonight. Listen, it's the, it's the Deep South's oldest rivalry. Um, the 128th playing of Georgia Auburn, and uh, we're talking to a guy tonight that ripped Auburn's hearts out in uh, in 2017 SEC championship game. The Tigers had all the momentum until Davin Bell Bellamy took it from them, and uh, we're going to talk with him tonight. But before we do that, we got to we got to uh, you know give it a little nod to a sponsor, GameTime.co. All right, guys, listen, GameTime specializes in last minute ticket deals. And Roos has used them. I have used them. It is seamless. It is it is beautiful. Their interface is it's incredible. It is an incredibly interactive thing. Um, I, I love that you get to see exactly where you're sitting in a stadium like atmosphere. And listen, you don't have to do just sports. You can do concerts. We saw Drake up there. Um, I, I, I was actually looking through there for some uh, Zach Bryan tickets uh, to uh, when he, he comes to Mercedes Benz Stadium. I believe it's next summer. Um, you know, looking for all that stuff. I mean, we see Dave Chappelle right there. Who doesn't want to go see Dave Chappelle? He's awesome. I, fi I figured you'd be at Drake tonight, to be honest. Yeah, well, you know, started at the bottom. We're not there <laughs> yet. Uh, but, uh, listen, we're, we, you know, we're excited about game time. You should be, too. Uh, promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, gets you $20 off of a, uh, of a you know, of, a, of an order. Sorry. Uh, terms apply there. So, be uh, on the lookout. Game time dot c o go check it out the app is incredible too if you want to download that and again you see all those tickets to georgia auburn this weekend uh go see your bulldogs on the road or heck if you're an auburn fan you're watching this a thanks for watching and b um you know get something off gametime.co and go watch your uh, team play and um probably lose but we'll see all right let's get davin bellamy on here man hey jake how's it going What's up, dude? Hey, listen, you can talk to both Jakes tonight. Both of us, both of us named Jake. So I don't oh, know, yeah. how know Jake Roos yeah. here. Yo, yeah, well, that'd be pretty easy. That'd be pretty yeah. easy. That'd yeah, you easy. just just say it. Just say the name. Man, we go way back, dude. Yeah, it's been, I was it's just been gonna about say 10 that. years, huh? I was just gonna say that, man. You've been knowing me since uh, about what 2012? Yeah, somewhere in there, man. Is there in there? We go a long way, but you're not aging a bit. <laughs> well, I mean, you ain't either, but I, I am. I'm 40 now. <laughs> so uh, I am 40. Uh, listen, dude, um, man, what are you up to? Tell us, tell everybody what you're up to, because I know Georgia fans love you and, uh, and they right. would love to see what you've been up to. Oh um, man, I just finished. Well, I didn't just finish it, but um, the last time I played football was, you know, in the XFL um, with the DC defenders. Uh, I finished with nine and a half sacks in 10 games. Um, this is actually my second year um, doing a spring a football league, <clears throat> and I got like 16 sacks in 20 games. So right now I'm just training, man. Um, I'm feeling at the top of my game still, um, and kind of just waiting for that call, man. Gotcha. And you're, and you're located in Atlanta, right? That's kind of where you're located. You in Atlanta. Right yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, uh, tell us about tell us about the XFL. Tell us about playing football in the spring. I mean, you used to practice some football in the spring. You did yeah, that most yeah. of life. What's it like man, playing in the spring? Um, you know, man, like uh, my last year, uh, I was a part of that team. It was Bill O'Brien's last year, and we started off, you know, on four. And um, I was on the practice squad. Uh, I was protected like every week, meaning teams couldn't grab me. Uh, I was really like a diamond in the rough for the Houston Texans. And uh, the day I got my call up to the 53-man roster, I actually uh, got sick. I got a staph infection. It got into my bloodstream and put me in the hospital for 30 days and put me on, um, you know, injured reserve. So uh, the end of that year, I ended up getting cut, get picked up by the Tennessee Titans. 
a day before, you know, OTAs, I'm training with a uh, Chuck Smith and I tear my calf. So that happens outside of the facility and they cut you with a non-football, uh, you know, injury. And that's usually, you know, if you get injured anywhere outside of our facility, we're not responsible for it. We cut ties. So just these spring leagues are an opportunity for me um, just to show, you know, lack of talent. It wasn't the reason why, you know, I'm still not in the league. It's just, you know, sometimes that's how the ball rolls uh, when you get untimely sicknesses and, um, you know, injuries. So I just I'm just so grateful for those platforms that allow you to, you know, show um you know, you still got it. And um, one thing I learned about, you know, the XFL, it's a lot of talent. And you start to realize that, you know, everybody has a story. And um, to stick in the league, if you're not a top tier guy, everything kind of has to go right. You know, the coaching staff has to be input yeah. for, you know, a couple of years. Um, you got to be, you know, injury free. And when you look at those spring leagues, when you look at guys who can definitely play at the next level, it's just that, you know, uh, sometimes the cards weren't, you know, in their favor. So, um, but it's high competitive football. And uh, me and Leonard Floyd was making a joke. Uh, you know, we was hanging out this past summer. And I was like, bro, like, uh, you know, my seasons are 10 games. I'm like, bro, in two seasons, you know, that's 20 games. I got 16 sacks. I think if I line up uh, on the opposite side of you, I think I can go sack for sack, you know, with you. And uh, <laughs> we, was, <laughs> we was making jokes about that. And um, but I just, you know, say that to say the only difference in those leagues are there aren't guys like that. You know, there aren't the 80 million dollar guys in the, you know, XFL. You know, there, there, there aren't the Patrick Mahomes, but the the bottom of the 53, you know, those guys could go and, um, you know, switch at right. any time. So um, it's good competitive football, man. And I loved it. You know, I loved it, man. Yeah. You know, Davin, I mean, just the opportunity that that provides for guys. I mean, yes. it's, it's a different thing, right? I mean, it's, you know, it, I feel like, um, you know, I, I feel like guys are lucky to have that now. It for sure. No doubt. They, they always had the opportunity to do. So, I, you know, I guess if you were speaking to some young guys, you know, who are, uh, you know, currently playing and, and and maybe their their NFL, you know, things don't happen or maybe they run into some hardships like you did or, or whatever. You know, right. How important is this uh, opportunity for uh, you and how important can it be for other guys moving forward? Uh, it's definitely important. And I think the most thing that is um, really what I would tell people is, you know, don't care what other people think. You know, if you got a dream, and this is not just in sports, you know, if you got a dream and um, you feel like you need to achieve that dream, you do whatever steps that you got to do to achieve that. Don't let, you know, outside noise of, of people, um, you know, opinions um, deter you from doing what you want to do. Because, you know, I talked to a lot of guys that kind of had the same problems that I had, um, you know, with untimely, you know, saying injuries. And they was like, oh, man, I'm, uh, I just can't see myself playing anything else besides the NFL. Man, people are going to look down on the, you know, saying on the XFL, you know, on spring leagues. But, you know, if you're trying to achieve a dream, man, you know, the hell with them. You know, who, who, who gives a shit what they got to say? You know what I'm saying? And it kind of just teaches you to put one foot forward and just keep going. You know, like my first year I did the USFL. And I remember the week one of the USFL season, I had four sacks, three and a half tackles for a loss and seven tackles. And everybody was like, whoa, right? And I, and I ended up finishing um, that first year, you know, all USFL, um, I missed two games. I had six and a half sacks in eight games. And um, everybody for sure thought an NFL call was going to come then. You know, it was my first year out of the league. I was just in the preseason with the Chargers, and I just put up this tape so I can get the, you know, to the quarterback. Um, you know, everybody thought, okay, the NFL got a call, and they didn't. So, you know, I didn't pout. I said, okay, I guess I got to do more. And I did the XFL, and, um, you know, once again, I was voted first team, you know, all XFL. Now I went from six and a half sacks to nine and a half sacks in 10 games, um, and I still haven't gotten a call. But just keep going, you know, just keep going. And that's how I feel about it. And if the call doesn't come, I'll go and get 20 sacks in 10 games next year to where you can't deny me. So I think that's what I would tell guys, you know, if you want to get to – 
you know what I'm saying, that next level. Um, somebody has taken your same story and made a success out of it. You know, one of the guys from the Spring League uh, is um, Turper from the Cowboys. And this is a guy who played in the Overseas League in London, played in the Arena League, uh, the first XFL, uh, played in the Fan Control League, and then his, then he played in the USFL, and then he was, you know, all pro. And this guy is – you know, small in stature. So his odds are stacked way against him than mine are. So, you know, just looking at stories like that, and I want people to look at my story when I make it to the next level and also, well, back, you know, to the next level and show that I can play, you know, at a high level, man, that, you know, they can look at me and say, you know what, just keep going, you know, just keep going. And it's, and it's, I, I would say probably too for you, man, it's nothing different, right? I mean, it's kind of been this way your whole career, hasn't it? I mean, yeah. it's like, you know, I mean, yeah. you came to Stanley, which is not exactly a, a known football powerhouse. I mean, you know, you come on, you, you're, you're fighting for playing time, you know, you get it, you're, you're competing there. You know, it's, this is, this is the Davin Bellamy story in a, in a nutshell, isn't it? Dude, you know, uh, this is the first time I ever said this, you know, publicly and me and Jay go way back. So, you know, I want to, I want this to, you know what I'm saying, be on your show. Uh, when I got my DUI, my uh, red shirt, freshman year, uh, I leave the jail and I go straight to Coach Rick's office. Uh, Leonard Floyd was there. Jordan Jenkins was um, there. And um, Lorenzo Carter was coming in the following year. And I was a red shirt. And I remember Mark Rick told me, you'll probably never play here because of – one, I think Jonathan Taylor had just gotten arrested. It was just like the strings of the rest, and then boom, here goes this one. And I think he was just over the second chance part, how many was rolling. And he said, you know, you'll probably never play here. And um, that camp, this was the old school camp too. This one we had, um, this was Pruitt first year. So we had like 26 days of camp, dude. And um, every morning, Leonard Floyd was my roommate, so you can attest to this. Every morning I had to meet Coach T on the track stadiums at uh, 4 a.m. Or with it, 4 a.m. I had to run 40 stadiums and uh, make it to breakfast uh, to start the camp schedule at 6. And crazy enough to believe – I did that for about 20 straight days. And some of the strength and conditioning coaches were like, yo, coach, we, you got to chill out. He can't. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, eventually he's going to crash. But you know what's crazy? I had the best camp of my life that year. So I was getting up at like 3.30, running 40 stadiums. I would come back to the room, um, flow. You know, Leonard Flo was just getting up to go to breakfast. I would shower go to breakfast real quick, start the schedule. And I had the best camp of my life. And this before Coach Smart kind of – this before, you know, of course I had Coach Smart and that chop wood, carry water thing I didn't know about yet. But when I think about on it, I had to take every single moment time by time. Because if I looked at it on a bigger scale, I probably would have, like, I can't do this, I'm gone. So I was like, you know what? I got I got stadiums. Let's wake up. Let's do the stadiums. All right. Box check. Let's go. Let's let's go to meetings. Okay. Box check. Let's go to practice. Box check. I had to continue, continue to do that. And I think that's when everyone, my teammates, everyone in the facility was like, you know what? This guy wants to be a bulldog. You know, he's 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 um manned up from his mistake. He's endured more punishment than the, you know, mistake, you know, needed to be and let the football guys, you know, take care of them. And, um, yeah, man, so this has kind of been my story for a while, man. So I'm just used to it. You know, you just got to keep going. Was there uh, was there any other interaction with Coach Rick after that? Any kind of like, hey, you did it, dude. You, I mean. Uh, honestly, no. No. Really? No. No, I just kept it internal. And, yeah. um, and uh Good for you, man. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, so that was uh, um, yeah, man. It's been my story. So man, you just gotta keep going, right? Uh, Coach T trying to put you on the news is what he's trying to do. Like get you on the bottom line of ESPN. Like you know, they so Devin Bellamy rushed to the hospital. <laughs> like that. He's trying to get you. He's trying to get your mom up there just dotting his eye, dude, um, man. Like. <laughs> 
but if you do the crime, you gotta do the time, you know. And uh, yeah, and and you know that was a silly mistake that I did, and you know I had to own up to it. But um, I just Dude, hey, listen, you're you're party. talking to a couple of downtown Athens vets <laughs> right here. Like lots and lots and lots of times, you know, only bad way, decisions get only, made. Only, only way I avoided it was within. I lived within walking distance. That was oh, the only so way. Good. I mean, you're I would have been good. the same. Hey, hey, hey never got one. Never got one. But I was in the car for one in the passenger seat. And and I don't know that I've ever told anybody this story either. So a friend of mine, we went downtown. It was during the NCAA tournament one year. Um, we had been watching. It was on the Saturday, first Saturday of the NCAA tournament, uh, basketball tournament. We've right. been playing, you know, just playing beer pong all day long, you know, doing all that thing. And then we went downtown and we just kind of stayed at it. And uh, one thing led to another. And and my buddy was like, I can drive. I'm good. I'm good. And, you know, I'm not in any sort of good judgment to be able to say, no, For you're sure. not. No, Every you're year. not. So I just go along with it. <laughs> Get into the passenger seat. He, he, he backs into a car just like barely, just like bumps it. And there's a there's a, there's an officer like watching right everything. All right. right and so pulls us over. He starts doing the sobriety test. I'm sitting there like, you know, like, please, please, please. And um, all of a sudden, the police officer comes over and goes, hey, we're taking your friend to jail. And he handed me the keys. And he said, <laughs> he handed me the keys. He said, hey, why don't you climb over here and put that key in that ignition and then pull it over there in that parking spot? And I was like, no. Nah. Nope. <laughs> no. <not doing. laughs> I did I have good enough judgment to not to do that. So call, call uh, he, he literally tried to entrap me. Yeah, but uh, I, I did not get caught that night, so that was a uh, that was a good <laughs> night. So hey, let's go back. Let, let's go. Obviously, it's not a mistake that I that I reached out to you today to talk sure. about with Georgia Auburn this coming week because, you know, of all the things that have happened in the Georgia Georgia Auburn rivalry, obviously you guys go there in 2017 right. as the number one team in the country, and did you, you get beat up? I mean, there's just all there is to it. They, it was their night. It was not y'all's. Right. Take me back to, you know, not necessarily during that game, but take me back to, like, right when y'all walked off the field that night and what changed between then and that next game. Man, um, you know, what I always say is my main thing is um, sometimes – a humble pie is the best for, you know, your nutrition. And um, I think with that roster that we had, you know, um, it was the number one team in the country. Um, rock stars at the time, everyone's getting attention. Um, Coach Mar did a great job of making sure, you know, no one got you know, complacent um, because practices actually got harder. You know what I'm saying? And we went into that game actually beat up. And I remember my hand, man, my thumb, dude. Like, dude, I was just in so much pain going into that game, man. And a lot of us were because we were practicing so hard in a grand scheme. If he didn't want us to get cocky, so practices got harder. And, um, you know, we're going into that game, and we knew we were going to get, you know, everyone's best shot. That's what we asked for. Um, but going into that game, um, everything was just going their way. The crowd was rocking. I, you know, I was at Georgia for five years, and that's probably what's the loudest arena I've, you know, I've played in. Um, and they gave mm -hmm. us, you know, a butt whooping. But the thing that um, everyone kept saying, and what we knew for sure is, you know, you won the battle, but you didn't win the war. We'll see you again. Um, it was their Super Bowl. We came in there very beat up, um, physically, mentally exhausted. Um, and I think that when jolted us, I mean, lost, it jolted us and woke us back up and said, you know, we can't be beat. And um, I remember uh, just the coach was like, we should put a, a something whooping on him. Beat the dog crap out of you. Yeah, something like that. That's what he said, yeah. <laughs> That's what, and um, we played that back in the weight room. <laughs> we didn't play music. All you just heard was that. Like literally, like some propaganda for World War II. That's all you heard. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, when we seen them again, oh man, we were so ready to play them. Like we wanted them. We didn't want anybody else. That's who we wanted. So I mean, walking off that field, we were like, we'll see y'all again. We'll see you again. We uh... and it didn't and it didn't start off great in that SEC championship game. <laughs> they they kind of had that early momentum until 
I think it's that play right there. That's I right. all hadn't come out yet, but but it came out. Take me through that. You know, take me through that call. Like, what did you know? Do you? Remember, I mean, it's probably one of the most, more unforgettable moments of, of your Georgia career, right? Right. No doubt. No doubt. Um, you see me smiling just thinking about it. Um, man, I just remember, dude. I was like, here we go again. And um, I thought, like, you know, I was thinking, you know, with all the build up to the game, how they just had beat us. You know, you come into that game, it's like, okay, here it goes again. And, uh, you know, Carryon Johnson was a beast. And um, after the first game, you kind of think, okay, it was a fluke. But then he came out early. He was running the ball on us again. I was like, okay, maybe this isn't a fluke. Maybe, you know, Carryon Johnson is just that guy, and they have our number. Um, and I forgot what the call was, but um, Zoe was the more athletic defense end. So he was lined up. Uh, to the field um and we had a simulated uh, pressure where i go to the boundary which is the short side of the field and um i just rush high and lorenzo carter kind of spies and um that illusion to the quarterback if you're facing the defense if you see one guy rushing high you feel that pressure and naturally your eyes go here but this defense and it's dropping that edge looks shorter so you think it's an escape route that way which makes the boundary rusher able to rush high and you don't see him coming um so it worked you know perfect to um you know it's in perfection because you know stidham was known for um he kind of had hurt us a little bit um you know with his improvision so we knew we needed a spy on him and we knew he was kind of scrambling to pass the ball not scrambling to run so that illusion kind of worked out perfectly but a crazy thing about that play somebody's wide open in the back of the end zone <laughs> so if i don't get to him <laughs> so i guess i guess your play is only as good as the players because if i if i don't get to him that's a touchdown in the back and i remember and the only and the only reason i know that because i run off and um one of the defensive coaches was like it was somebody in the back of the end zone wide open you saved you saved it. and man, i think right there we were we went on like a 21 point uh, run, man. That was, um, and the dome was rocking, man. Uh, the dome was rocking after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it was seven nothing. And then, then y'all scored the next 28 after it's, that. Yeah, yeah I think y'all came yeah. down and, and y'all hit Nauta uh, in the end zone to tie it mm -hmm. up. Yep. And then, um, you kind of got jobbed right there before halftime. They called a pick play when Terry Godwin caught the ball at the line of scrimmage and they still called a pick play, which they shouldn't have called him. It's a right. And uh, but I think you went into the half 13 13 7. No doubt, no and doubt. And then you got Hawkins Muckle blocking a field goal there in the second half. Um, I don't know if you ever heard the story on how he ended up at Georgia, but that was that's another good one. Georgia didn't even know who he was. Pruitt really? shows up to the high school to recruit like some young dudes like AJ Terrell and, and Nigel Warrior, and he sees this dude in the hallway and he's like, Who the hell is that? Who's that? You know, like, you know how who's that? Who's that? <laughs> who is that? <laughs> My God, <laughs> asparagus! He knows. See, he knows. He knows. <laughs> That's yeah, he knows. just like him. Yeah, we, dude, we had a we had a whole show where we talked about Pruitt during camp one year, where he would just say stuff like he told um like he told coldest, Jarvis Wilson the, the he told Jarvis shit Wilson have, he the was like shit ever you know this like yeah Jeremy Pruitt would say the coldest shit you have ever heard to somebody. <laughs> Jack Jones was the one I remember, and he said, "Shaq, I will send your ass back to Daytona if you yeah. ever do that again." I mean, just like got on. He told he told Jarvis Wilson, he told Jarvis Wilson, "Man, if you keep getting your weight under you like that, you see over there, that's number twenty-seven. That's Nick Chubb. He'll hit you in the mouth and run out your ass." Yeah. <laughs> And he was dude, doing this with the media out there. Dude, one time, uh, his phone, I remember um, <laughs> before we started getting all like, the Chick-fil-A for breakfast, uh, we used to just uh, <laughs> have like a little grab and go of some just breakfast sandwiches thrown together. And then inside the locker room was like some breakfast bars and some peanuts or something. And I remember his first week there, he came in there in the morning and he was like, this fucking bullshit ass breakfast they got. The fucking peanuts and breakfast burger. I had a gang weight around here. That's why you don't win any fucking thing. They don't win. Dude, 
Billy's like, what's that? It was hilarious, man. I, uh, true story, man. I love Coach Poole, man. Can you, I, listen, I, I, will, I, I will ask you, since we're on the topic, can you imagine Jeremy Pruitt being your high school teacher? Like, dude. I mean, he is, he's back in high school teaching in Alabama. Can you imagine him being your high school gym coach? Like, that – you imagine that being was, a fat kid running running the mile, dude? Would dude, you hear me through it, y'all? <laughs> this is my question, though. Did he choose to go back uh, to high school to kind of start back over? I know he could at least got another uh, job at some division level, or did he want to go back to high school? Well, he, 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 got, got he got a show, show calls. Yeah, he got a show calls penalty. I don't think he's got to do anything. He, I mean, that man's made a lot of money. He's made a lot of money. Like, yeah. You know, I mean, and I don't think he's he doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that's just going to the Bahamas every other weekend either. Like, I mean, that is true. He got to be around the game. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, he, I think it's just I think it's just kind of a voluntary thing to there. And listen, I love that. I, I had great interactions with the guy. He used to um, I used to talk to him after losses a lot of right. times in 2015. I think I talked to him after basically every loss except the Tennessee game because that was on the road. He called me after the Alabama game that year. Um, and we, we, we tossed him, and I, I liked him just fine. I mean, it was sucked to see him get in trouble at Tennessee and all that yeah. stuff, and, and it fall apart on him like that. But um, he, just a phenomenal football coach. He understands ball, man. Dude, man, I, and honestly, you know, uh, Coach Smart's the best coach I ever had. But I always tell people, you know, Coach Pruitt doesn't get, doesn't get uh, the credit for the help and the turnaround. You know, he was the first coach of that Alabama tenure to come in. I mean, you got to admit it. We have taken a little bit of their uh, way of life and brought it over to here because it's a winning formula. You see what I'm saying? So, everybody I mean, has. Everyone everybody. has. Yeah, you everybody. know, and it, it, I mean, it's even you know trickled to the pack uh, twelve with Oregon. You know, yeah. they got Dan. Dan came from Smart. Smart saving Alabama. So. Um, but, you know, Pro doesn't get enough credit for, you know, how he came in and start to change the mentality. Um, you know, he crawled so everyone can kind of walk a little bit also, man. You know, him and Kevin Shear, you know, him and Coach Shear was really the yeah. first two um, to really just come in. I remember when we first got there, we was like, yo, these dudes crazy. What's wrong with y'all, man? <laughs> like, dude, calm down. Dude, you know? Coach Shear, man, you remember them uh, You remember them seven on seven camps? in the summer it's just so hot and we used to go out there and cover those and we'd stay out there all day and i had had knee surgery i think I, i'd had i'd had quad tendon surgery no it was my acl surgery i had an acl surgery earlier um i'm standing out there like in sanford stadium seven on seven finals and sherry comes over and stands beside me and i look at him and he goes he goes, I got to get the fuck out of here, man. My back is killing me. <laughs> and I said, dude, I said, dude, my calves are like, I'm, I've am i got cramps in both calves right now. Right. He goes, he goes, but I, and I said, I said, but you know, you know, we can't do anything, right? He goes, man, I ain't finna let these kids see me. You see me act like an old man out here in front of everybody. <laughs> That's you know, how he just, I mean, But you could tell he was just, you know, he was sitting there with that stoic face and his sunglasses on just right there with, you know, just watching straight ahead. And you could tell he was just counting. He was like, all right. all right. He's looking up at that clock, like trying to get that seven on seven game over with, so he could go home. Stone oh, Cold man. Steve Austin, man. He, he, he <laughs> Stone Cold. Stone Cold Steve Austin. He wanted <laughs> his first thing. He was always say, "I want the outside linebackers to be bad motherfuckers." I was just kidding, <laughs> Davin, I got Davin. I got to ask you. You mentioned you mentioned you know Pruitt and those guys and, and Alabama and everybody taking from those guys, but. In a large way, man, like you coming back and, and you guys kind of setting the stage for what this Georgia run has become, you know, that, right. was, that was so key in all of this. Can, can you just talk to me about, like, the pride that you guys take in that, especially you, and, and then also, too, like, you know, what it's like to see Georgia on this level right now, man? Right, no doubt. And it's, 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 it's honestly crazy, um, you know, because all of it started in a uh, – Calm class. Me and Sonny Michelle had the same calm class. And honestly, um, I read her junior year. Um, I had kind of like checked out, man. I was kind of just ready to be like, you know, um, how really best can my draft grade go from here? Uh, going into my fifth year, I'm um, getting older. Uh, if I'm going to go low round undrafted or, or whatever, I'd rather do that a year early than a year later. Um, 
<clears throat> just because of the little age thing, you know, you know, in the NFL. And I remember I was talking to Sony. I'm thinking Sony was leaving, and we're in the back of the class. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm out of here, bro. And I said, uh, what you think about doing it? And then he was like, oh, I'm staying. And I knew for sure in my head that Chubb was leaving. And then I was like, so you think Chubb's staying? And he was like, no, nah, yeah, Chubb's staying. I already talked to him. And um, me and Zoe kind of already knew I was checked out because me and Lorenzo was like roommates. And and um, at the last minute, I think Zoe was like, man, yeah, I want to come back. So it was like, I, you know, let's do it. You know, I, everybody else was. So it was like, <laughs> let's do it. And um, good peer remember, pressure. Do, yeah, it, good peer pressure. So I remember um, we was practicing for the bowl. And uh, it's crazy because I heard that since I was the last one on the bubble about coming back, um, I heard that there was a PowerPoint in place. And I was going to have to go to Coach Smart's office. He was going to show me a PowerPoint on why I should stay. However, earlier that day, we practiced. And um, after we did the warm-ups and we broke off 22-hour drills, I just ran by and was like, yo, I'm going to stay, and just ran to my drills. But honestly, it, it, he was supposed to show me this big PowerPoint. <laughs> Did he make you watch it anyway? No, and that's the only <laughs> thing. There was there was some, you know, there was some graduate assistant who had spent like four hours building that thing that dude, was so mad. Dude. Probably had it sent back to him like three times. Probably like this is shit. Do it again. Yeah. <laughs> you think you're gonna get Lorenzo? Or you think you're gonna get Davin Bell and Lorenzo this, Carter back on this dude. thing? Come on now, man. To this day, I always want to see that PowerPoint because. <laughs> I think the only um the only kind of positive that coaching staff was real big on not giving not giving positive reinforcement. It's like <laughs> Coach Coach Shear used to always say like um if I pat you on the back, you'll shit in my hand. <laughs> if I pat you on the butt, you'll shit in my hand. So he was big on they was not big on positive reinforcements. So I just wanted to hear, you know, some good things in a PowerPoint. Like, okay. And I, to this day, I'm like, man, I wish I would have seen that PowerPoint. I did want to bring this up earlier because it's it, it tells me a lot about you that you have so many nice things to say about Coach Pruitt because, I mean, Coach Pruitt didn't want – I mean, if I remember correctly, Coach Pruitt didn't want you at FSU. And you, the day he got hired, you tweeted, hey, Coach Pruitt, we meet again. You know, like yeah, – I do. Is, is that yeah, the reason that's, you didn't end up at FSU, right? Yeah. I remember it was uh, – Coach Elliott was the D-line coach. He left and I think went to, what, Kentucky or something. And Coach Pruitt yeah. came in and they was kind of going away from the speed on the edges to bigger, you know, thicker guys, you know, Alabama style. And yeah, that was the case, man. He didn't want me. He didn't want me. So um he ended up playing for him anyway and love him. Cool. Yeah, likewise, likewise, likewise. Yeah. Now, yeah, I mean, I, how cool though is it, D Davin, to see it like all kind of, kind of come full circle from oh season, yeah, you know? oh yeah, man. Um, you know, just to watch, uh, I was watching Jordan Davis um, just a few minutes before Halloween call, DeAndre Swift. And um, those guys took it, that class right after us, took it to another level. And, you know, when we see those guys, man, you know, when I see uh, Jordan Davis, um, I saw him at Buckhead, uh, you know, last year during the offseason, and uh, he was calling me, man, you the GOAT, man, you the GOAT. And just to hear that from those guys and, and, and just remember after the national championship game, uh, Swift, who was a freshman at the time, um, him wanting to take a picture, you know, for his memories because I was leaving. And just to see, you know, where those guys took it um, to where they are now. And still a lot of those guys, you know, like Monty Rice, um, they still reach out to me, you know, they're in the you know, NFL because of um, that leadership and also that uh, just mentality we put into them. And I think the best thing about that last class um, – was we showed that you could still have fun with it, but not go over the top. You know, I remember like, so I think the big problem with 
with you know kind of the sports world right now is Colorado's trying to find that balance of okay we're not we you don't have to be too traditional you can have the rappers at the game but it doesn't have to be uh, uh you know the, you know the hip hop awards or you don't have to do an interview with you know it's just it's finding that balance you know we you know we had the Migos at the game you know and but we also found that balance so we show those guys you know like you can still have fun and 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 have that flamboyance to you but also we were hard nosed um and just see where they took it and where the program is now man going on a three peak when when we won the SEC championship that was the first time we had won it since what year uh 2005 yeah <laughs> yeah and it's and yeah been 12 years Dude, and then the and then we go to the national championship and we lose, and then just to see now Georgia on a three peat, dude, yeah. and this all that has been in a six year span. Yeah, you know, and they always say, you know, um, the best way, you know, we are remembered through how we impact people. You know, what I'm saying, you know, that's why, you know, like the mama mentality. You know, even though he's passed on, you know, he's a, a mortal being because of what he left here on a smaller on a smaller scale you know that class that decided to come back it left for energy it left an expectation you know because once um those guys like stokes and all those young guys you know that was on that team that was enjoying the ride you know they seen like okay i like being treated like a rock star you know i like you know everything that comes with winning everything that comes with the number one team yeah. I don't want to go back to nothing else. And you yeah. see that, and now they've taken them to go to another level where everyone wants to come in. You don't want to be that team that's 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 not those guys. So um, just see where it is now, man. It's um, It brings joy to my heart, man. You mentioned Eric Stokes. Uh, I mean, I can't ever think about him when I think about him. Maybe he's the nicest person in the world. Like Maybe that's like one of the sweetest dudes that's ever lived because <laughs> – Dude, he used to just talk about it. Like, we used to make fun of him a little bit in the media, not make fun of him in a bad way, but it was like all of his teammates were phenomenal and all of his teammates yeah. were the greatest ever. Like, he was like, right. hey, hey, so what are you seeing? Oh, man, he's phenomenal. He, he's the greatest ever. Right. He, he's he's right. the greatest kid I've ever seen. You know, and everybody was the best. He's just one of the nicest dudes I've ever run up with. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you, um, because we're, we're going to get to some questions here that we ask everybody here in just a second. Um, as as a as a bulldog, as a guy who who you know bled, sweat, cried for three for five years at Georgia, who on the schedule? Because the schedules are about to change. Who on the schedule was like, I hate these guys. We got to beat these guys. Did you feel like every who was that team for you? You know, a lot of people would think it would be Georgia Tech, but it wasn't. Um, towards the front end of my career with Mark Rick, because I played for both coaches, which was mm -hmm. which was also very unique. Um, the first part of my like my first two years, uh, we had it in with the Gators, and then um, I wasn't really a part of those rivalries. I was kind of red shirted here and there, but when when I was actually playing, man, we hated Tennessee. Yeah, the passion especially after the Chubb injury and the cheering. Yeah. Oh, my God, that boiled us up. Um, and then one year, um, they had Jalen Hurd, Adam Kamara, Josh Dobbs, and that, that star-studded team, and everybody just thought they was just, you know, going to run over the SEC, and they were so cocky. And we were like, man, we know y'all. Y'all Tennessee. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I would say it was definitely uh, – Definitely Tennessee, man. We hated Tennessee, especially after the cheering, you know, when Chubb yeah. went down. That and and cool. y'all let a couple of them get away from you back to back there because y'all had them 24-3 in that Chubb game, and then the Hail Mary game was the next they, Dude, we, we we hated them. And, um, but then y'all goosed, goosed them in 17, 41 nothing. Yeah, right? yeah, no doubt. And, uh, like, everyone talks about the revenge tour. I remember our first winter workout. When everybody decided to come back, we had a whiteboard in the weight room. And then I went into the weight room and I wrote revenge tour. You know, because all those games the year before, we were losing by like one possession. We lost to Vanderbilt on a fourth and one. Um, then we lost, you know, with the Hail Mary. So we, we knew we could beat all these teams in the SEC because we kept losing 
by these small margins that uh, we knew if everyone came back, we would beat them. So that's why we wanted to beat Florida 46, 42 to 6, or like whatever that score was. And we made Tennessee, you know what I'm saying, have a goose egg. It was personal from a year before. Yeah. I took that yeah. personal. What will Mike say? <laughs> now, now, Davin, I wanted to ask you, you know, like you said, you, you played under both of uh, both Mark Rick and Kirby Smart and under Kirby for a little bit smaller amount of time. But I'm just curious, you know, are you surprised that Kirby has been able to do what he's done? Knowing what you know about him, having worked with him, like that he's been able to take Georgia to this height, man. I mean, you know, was that kind of evident that it could go that way? even in those early stages, man. Clear as day. Clear as day. Um, you know, because like I just mentioned, the year before, you know, we were losing all those games with a first-year head coach um, just by, like, a couple, you know, plays here and there, except for when, you know, Ole Miss whooped us. But after that, man, we was in, you know, every game. And um, once I think everyone um, got adjusted to – that level of intensity, you know, that he brought. And by that time, we was kind of used to it because of, like I said before, uh, Pruitt and Sheer warmed us up to that Alabama way. And and just to put things into perspective, I mean, the first thing Coach Shear said to us was, um, you guys have governors. I had no idea what a governor were was but he was like you know it's a governor you know you know what a governor is i'm like no he's like you got a governor on the car when you go 50 miles per hour you know go nowhere higher than 50 miles per hour that's what you guys are like y'all don't know how to go past your governor so once uh you know smart got there we kind of was ready for that and um now that i look back on it the lessons that he taught um as far as how to conduct business um, it's not a, not just for football, um, and it's crazy how everything goes full circle to the first thing you guys asked me about, the XFL and the USFL journey. Um, I don't think I will have such a chop wood, carry water, or keep going, or don't worry about results, just focus on the day-in-day -day activity if I didn't have Coach Smart. And, and just to see how it impacted me years from being up under his organization in my other walks of life, I can only imagine how the guys are there now. You know what I'm saying? They're machines, they're robots. You know what I'm saying? So um, just if he'd been a great mo motivator, really, um, and the way he can connect with the team, you want to run through a wall, you know, for him. Um, you know, you definitely seen it coming. You definitely seen it coming. Because once he got his guys in and you put that with the mentality that he can make you into, um, you get a product like this, yeah. most definitely. So each of us have one last question. My question is this. Uh, you're having an out-of-body – you die, right? You have an out-of-body <laughs> experience, and you get a chance to plan your own funeral. Somebody's fitting to send you off, all right? <sighs> It can be a comedian. It can be a performance, R and B, rap. Doesn't matter who who is sending Davin Bellamy off uh, <laughs> and on, on his uh, on the day he passes away. Oh, <laughs> Sorry to make you deal with existential stuff on the. Uh, on the okay. Yeah, uh, well, one, you know, I do want to be cremated, but that's another thing. We're gonna focus on the question. <laughs> if that uh, was the way. I think, uh, man, dead or alive? Either way. Dead Anybody. or alive? Anybody. Dead or alive. Yeah, dead or alive. Anybody you want. Dead or alive. I would like, um, damn. Hey, you can even you can even pick somebody to eulogize you, right? You can even pick somebody <laughs> just to go up there and talk, you know, like somebody to just uh, go up there and say nice things about you. Man, it's tough. I think music-wise, I, I don't want it to be too sad. I wanted to, I want everybody to get jiggy. So I would think I would have like um, Michael Jackson send me off. Okay. With some, you know, with some rock with you and some, you know, smooth criminal. Just get the <laughs> everybody, you know, that's and Morgan Freeman to do my usually. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's I good. I like it. it. I was expecting Leonard Floyd to be honest with you. Oh. I thought, I thought <laughs> 
He might tell some stories. Or Jordan Jenkins. Or Jordan no, Jenkins. Man, they, they not, they, they're not. No, Jordan Jenkins get in there talking way too loud. Way too loud. Uh, way too loud. And, you know, Jordan, uh, don't know, Jordan don't know when to stop, so he just start with <laughs> and tell some story that I need to be told. <laughs> Jordan actually hosted me on my uh, visit, my official visit. Oh, did he? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Um, so my, my question for you, Davin, is, uh, and I ask everybody this question, um, you know, you've, you've played professional football uh, in a number of different settings. Uh, you've uh, been involved in football for years now, uh, college, professional, et cetera. So you've traveled a lot. What's the worst hotel room Davin Bellamy has ever stayed in? Dude, how much time you got, man? <laughs> Oh, look, everybody that's watching, I want you to... Number one, it. number one, the worst Dude, one. Dude, um, when you... After this call, you got to Google this. It's the Greenbrier Ghost, right? So my first year in Houston, it gets really hot in Texas around camp. So you go to West Virginia for camp, and you go into the mountains, and you stay at the Greenbrier Hotel. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys have heard... heard I'm familiar of, with this, yeah. Um, it has the you know PGA course I think or something like that yep. and okay. also and then also this hotel is so old it was used as uh, the president's bunker around the um, what was it, World War Two was where about you know bombs dropping so anyways you know make a long story short we're doing camp there and everyone is telling me it's haunted I'm a rookie I'm thinking it's I'm thinking it's a, a lie right so. <laughs> My first night, I'm laying, there you go right there. And um, the crazy story, my first night I'm laying down and um, I wake up like three o'clock in the morning. I, I wake up, I look around, nothing's there. Second night, wake up at the same time, nothing's there. Third night I wake up, my heart's beating out of my chest and it's weird because I'm waking up at the same time every night and um, I just put my covers over my head. This is a true story. True story. I put my covers over my head like this to go to sleep. And my covers start moving like this. No. No lie. Um, and honestly, man, I'm I'm a little weirdo. You know, I watch uh, <laughs> Ghost Hunters, bro. Like, I, I, I love scary movies for we, some we reason. Need to get on a text. We need to get on a text, Dan. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm infatuated with stuff like this. So. Yeah. Anyway, I am not. Long. I do not watch horror movies. <laughs> so Scared to make death. A, make a long story short, I wake up the next day. I call my girl and I'm like, can you Google this hotel? I have no idea about this lady. I just know ever since I walked in here, something's act like it's been following me. It's been real eerie. And last night, that was weird. So she said, oh, my God. I said, what? She said, are you sure you want to hear this? I said, yeah. No, actually, she said, it's a lady that... Um, used to live there she got her head cut off by her husband right so um just to wrap everything up i found out watching a lot of ghost stories and this i knew this was real i found out watching a lot of ghost shows that you know if the if a ghost can feel like someone is can feel them they want you to know their story and when i googled her it stopped and that's what I learned. And but that was the um, that was the uh, that was definitely number one. That was definitely number one. I'm about to I'm about to Google every ghost I can yeah, ever I'm, I'm Google about, so that I never have to deal with one. I'm, I'm watching ever. I'm watching YouTube videos all night tonight. <laughs> dude, 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 I am dude. I am so like horror movies. My wife loves them, and I'm just I come to my office right here, prop my feet up on my desk. I watch you know I watch you know Wolf of Wall Street for the thirtieth time or something like that. <laughs> You're a coward. I am not watching. I am not watching Insidious. You are not. You are a coward. Jake Rowe, noted coward. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'm scared to death. I won't sleep. I won't no sleep. Doubt. No doubt. Dude, I, hey, man, this was so much fun. It will not be the last time we do no, it for well, sure. We yeah, definitely need to come on and do this again because uh, I'm sure there's a million more things to talk about. You are amazing. <laughs> Um, and uh, we really appreciate it, and, and good luck with everything, man. I hope you stay healthy during your training and everything like that. Blessings Thank on you, you man. Thank, Thank you, Dad. I really appreciate you guys for having me. Thank you. Thank you, man. Hey, thanks Go for coming on, dude. No. 
I think, uh, listen, no, no offense to Dean Leggy or Bill Shanks. That's our greatest the bark after dark guest, in my the, opinion. The, that the was Jeremy, that was an Jeremy, absolute blast. The Pruitt stories alone were were worthy yes. of right admission, brother. <laughs> There's nothing. No wonder they can't gain weight. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Now we know why Cher was so upset about John Ledbetter not being able to gain weight. All right, all right. Speaking of gaining weight, listen, <sighs> if you buy bird dogs, you're not gonna have to worry about that because they, they're a little flexible, they're a little stretchy. You can get some bird dogs right now. They're going to make you look good. You're going to feel good in them. Um, I tell this story every single time that we do this uh, ad read, but I would talk about bird dogs even if they didn't sponsor this show because they are so comfortable. I've had mine for years and years at this point, and um, they just make a fantastic product. They last forever. They look good. They're comfortable as all get out. So get over to birddogs.com. Use uh, code DAWGS or birddogs.com slash dogs, um, you can get our discount, uh, which is actually not a discount at all. You just get some free product in there as well. I believe it's the Hydro Flask. Hydro Light, Flask style Hydro water Hydro Flask bottle. style water bottle at this point. That's right, yeah. Um, but um, obviously this uh, promotion has done quite well because there's been two or three products we've gone through at this point, and people love these things, man, and I get it. I'm a user. Uh, it's like it's like Tom Bosley with the uh, hair club for men, man. I'm not only a user; I'm the president, you know. So uh, <laughs> I, I would I, I love bird dogs. I recommend them to everybody. Get out there, check them out. They look good. They feel good. You will too. And uh, like I said, if you gain some weight, I've gone through about 25, 30 pounds in my bird dogs, and uh, they've still stayed true to me. So. Uh, get over, check them out. Like I said, birddogs.com slash dogs or birddogs.com and then use the promo code, code D-A-W-G-S and get your uh, Hydro Flask style water bottle as well when you check out. Over. All right, all right. little Jake on Jake here. And Jake on Jake is going to be um, our day as uh, hosts of a, uh, of a radio show. And, um, first of all, I got to tell you about, I got to tell you about the day I did it by myself for two hours. Um, so it wasn't just Bill that was out and we were filling in. We were also had dealing with, uh, the fact that Bill's main producer, um, everyone was, at the super stations had COVID. <laughs> yeah. Except for, uh, except for, uh, a, a young man by the name of Bill boys, B O Y S. Um, his name, Billy Boys, Bill Boys, William Boys. I don't care. Call him what I you think want. Think it was an alias. I stand and listen, by that. Let me tell you about old Bill Boys. Okay, he gave it the good old college try. He did his best. But I'll tell you this too: when the day I had to do it by myself, um, I'm sitting there. We've I'd done this before. He he counts us in. You know, kind of through a little messaging thing uh, called text, um, text messaging. Um, and he's counting. I'm expecting. All right, he's going to tell me any minute, thirty seconds. He's going to tell me any minute, ten seconds. And I'm just standing here. I'm sitting here just like this, waiting, waiting. Can't hear anything. Just waiting. And all of a sudden, I see the text pop up. Go, now. go now, now. And dude, I dive in. I'm I'm like this close to the microphone. I dive in, and I'm like, well, the Braves just lost us. I mean, I'm talking a hundred <laughs> miles an hour, right? And I talk. Jake, until I feel like, all right, at least I'm done. And I look up and I've got seven more minutes in the second. Oof, oof. And, and that I, was the opening segment? Yeah, opening oh. segment. And I just, like, I'm sitting there trying to start, like, Googling box scores to get scores <laughs> around the major leagues or something. Like, I, I've, I've, I am so lost. So I finally catch my breath, and I've got another segment to do by myself after that, right? before I get into talking to Brent Rollins over at UGA sports, maybe I had Brent and then I had another segment, but I had a chance to calm down and I kind of think overdid it the other way. Cause I think I was talking way too fast that I was just blowing through my stuff and I didn't. And I, so next time I came up, it was almost like, how is it? AMSR, ASMR, AM, yeah, whatever. ASMR. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. I was, hello friends. <laughs> you're like you're, you're like scratching a piece of bread over yeah. the thing. <laughs> you hear that sound? That's the sound of the Atlanta Falcon. <laughs> you know, like I'm just over there, like just I'm like, all right, we got to stretch this. I'm almost like looking at the clock, being like, all right, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna intro this thing for like, you know, I'm I'm like, God, I got to gobble up time. You listen, man, live radio is not for the faint. Of it's just uh, no, I would say not, buddy. Um, it was 
I and I and I really respect that you did it by yourself that day. Um, and I wish I could have come on with you because it was tough. The two you of did, us, you did come well, on. With yeah, me. I did, I did, but not in the way that we did it before. But it was tough, the two of us, even. But at least you had somebody else to play off of and throw it back on and kind of collect your thoughts for a couple of minutes. And so it was, man. It was, it was, it was an interesting experience. And I will say, look, I'm, I'm not. You know me. I am. I, I think you once said, and I have quoted you many times on this. No one thinks you're a bigger joke than you do. Uh, talking about myself, um, but I thought we did pretty good. I really did. I thought we. I thought we held our own, and uh, especially all things considered. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, we we were. I mean, we were just we were working with one hand tied behind our back in a big way. So. Well, the first thing that the first challenge was the fact that we couldn't hear like yes, anything that was anything. happening on the other so end. So we're doing it on zoom and the super stations, Bill super stations is a, is a zoom all in of itself. And again, we're working with like a first time producer here and, and he, he had that super stations muted. So we're not hearing any of the commercials or anything like that. Like normally there's like this lead into the show, like the Bill Shank show. Our, yeah, you know, right. or, yes. you know, Braves, Hawks, Falcons. Our, you know. our number two here on the Bill Shank show. Yeah, you know? like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Our, we we do that part, but yeah. you know, so I can't hear any of that. And the reason is, is because that Zoom is muted. And so, not only is that Zoom muted keeping us from being able to do that, but we don't have any phones. Sure. So we're not able to talk to Josh Kendall, who was supposed to come on to take up a segment, or, or Brett Beard. Beard to come on to yeah. take up a second segment. Um, so what we're doing is we're st- I'm scrambling the jets, grabbing dudes from on three, sending them the zoom link so that we don't have to worry about. We finally get it figured out toward the end of the show. And my favorite part of the whole show is we took three callers in the final segment. And I mean, I- I'm pretty sure it was, it was, it, it, it was unmistakable how, how big of a dream that was for me to take callers. Oh, yeah. On yeah, the yeah, you, yeah. You look like a kid on, on Christmas. Oh man. I was, nobody could see your face, but like I could on the zoom and like it, it was, I could tell it was, I like could tell. I was, I'm like, you're like, like, you're like, you're like, you're like, Oh no, oh, somebody wants to call in and talk to us. Great. That's fantastic. Yeah. I was, I was just worried that nobody was going to want to talk, call in and talk to us, but uh, we got to get one of these. Listen, next time we do it, we got to get one of these super engaged uh, producers like Palmer over here. Who's got his, uh, hoodie pulled up and he's texting with a leg up. He's on Tinder right now. Uh, yeah. so. <laughs> he's swiping. He's swiping on some girls right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he's, he's firing like, on he's the like, leg. Yo, Boar's head's open till 2 a.m. What's up? Um, uh, <laughs> golly. Dude, but yeah, those, the callers, man, like, 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 I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, movie City Slickers, but at the very end, oh, he's like, man, I'm happier than a puppy with two Peters. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of how I felt at that time. I was so, so stoked to handle some calls. No, it was and, sick, uh, man. We, I, I had a blast, though. It was, yeah, I'll do, I, I can't wait to do it again. It, I, I can't sh- wait to do it again and plan it out and just, just, I mean, get after it, dude. And I was shocked at how quick three hours went. I really, even with all the hiccups, and maybe the hiccups even made it, made it move faster because, like, every single second we were just, we were just trying to think about, like, where are we going from here? Where are we going from here? Where are we going from here? Um, no, it was it was cool, man. I I, I appreciate Bill having us on. Me and, too. And, and was, I'm glad he's feeling better. He's he's clearly feeling a lot better. Well, the only reason we went on is because he had COVID. But dude, next time we do it, I'm I'm cooking some stuff up, man. I'm I'm going to come in with some oh, teasers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I mean, gonna if come I get in, more than a 24 hour heads up, we can like I told you, camera. like I told you, I'm coming in with like. Listen, I'm going to compare the uh, coming up next segment. I'm going to compare the career of Stetson Bennett. To a dish that includes ground veal. Yeah, right. I'm gonna wear my Pat McAfee uh, like black tank top and uh, you know just be up pacing around my house like chugging Red Bull and yelling. Yeah, uh, what dude? Uh, that's got, that dude's got some energy, man. All right, <laughs> listen, we've been at this long enough. We're not gonna do any questions tonight, uh, but we will be back uh, with um, Bark After Dark next week. Um, next week will not be okay. Yeah, not next show, but the next show. Uh, will be a pre-recorded show um, next week. We plan on being live. The next show will be recorded, and it will be with John T. Edge, um, oh, University of Georgia graduate. Yeah, we're, we're we're linking up with him on October the second. Um, you know, for an interview, and and we're gonna pre-tape that and kind of put it out a little bit later on. I'm really excited to talk to him, man, because he's got such a great. Um, that is the such next a great show, scope of culture. What's that? That is the next show. Really, October is it? 2nd. Next Monday is October 2nd. 
but we'll, we'll, we're going to actually, maybe it's later than that then. It's sometime in October, but I knew it didn't okay. work out on a Monday for us. Maybe it's okay. Like okay. third. I'll have to check on that, but that'll have to be a pre recorded show. We won't be able to run it out on a Monday anyway. Um, simply At because. At any rate, John T. Edge, excited to have yeah, him. Yeah, from True Can't South. To talk, I want to talk grub with John T. Edge. Yeah, 100%. So, uh, you know, if you are, if you like True South on the SEC network, you've ever watched it, um, John's going to be on with us. He's a Georgia grad, he's an old Miss grad. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to talk with him. He's uh, he's good buddies with Wright Thompson. Maybe we can get him to dish a little bit on Wright and some of the some of their drinking stories. They actually got in a car accident right outside of Athens years ago uh, while filming True South. I, um, I hope I, I hope that John T. Edge drops stuff on Wright Thompson like Davin Bellamy did on Jeremy Pruitt. To be yeah. honest, <laughs> or Mart Rick, or or whoever yeah. you know, because yeah. Davin Bellamy came with the stories. Man, Davin Bellamy rose up the uh, the bar after dark power. Tremendous. All right, guys, uh, we've rambled on enough. You guys take care. We are going to see you next Monday. Make sure you check out the Georgia show this Wednesday. Um, who knows who'll be on it? Just come, you know, break that Easter egg open and see what happens. Rock, rock.